Hello, 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 everybody. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Let's pick up where we left off because last part was really long and I kept thinking the end was near, but it was pretty far off. But we'll probably finish this chapter up here and start the next one. It's to be our new office, yes. Our office? I rather like the sound of that. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're living in Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Attic now. <laughs> Me too. It's simply wonderful, isn't it? This is a pretty spacious attic. Like this is literally this this is pretty decent. <laughs> Hope you can see this, Kazuma. It's only a small step, but I like to think we're getting a little closer to your dream now. So, my dear fellows, do you like the place? Oh, it looks very different now. Ah, Mr. Sholmes. Yes, thank you so much. So delightful. It's a delightful room, Mr. Sholmes. I simply adore it. Good, I'm pleased to hear it. Iris and I are delighted to welcome you. Hope everybody's hungry. It's nearly time for dinner. We'll eat soon as Mr. Natsumi arrives. We have lots to celebrate. Oh, I hope nothing bad happens to him. Iris, you must l let me help you. Hurry then, Susie. You can be in charge of the salad. Splendid. All right. Oh, okay. Still more to go. So, Mr. Naruto, how does it feel? To have your own office in the capital. It's very exciting, actually. Can't help wondering. Help wondering what adventure await us. <laughs> Those were precisely my sentiments when I first established my office at this premises. Until I discovered the dark truth about the city of London, that is. Sorry? London is a glorious place, full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and mirth. But the brightness of lights casts the darkest of shadows. Shadows? What do you mean? Well, I believe you're aware of the murkiness that lies behind London's facade already. So once again, Mr. Naohudo. Welcome to London. Dang, well, of course. At the time, I had no idea of the significance of those words Mr. Sholmes spoke so casually about. <laughs> but it wasn't long after before my turn came to lift the facade and see the true depth of the murk that lay behind it. Oh wow, in the end, I was... <laughs> I was pretty close to the end than I thought from where I left off. Oh well, no problem. Let's save up. Oops, up there. Put in the slot I already have. Oh, I'm excited to start this new episode. Let us begin. The adventure of the unspeakable story, the Hound of the Baskervilles. A hound it was, but not such a hound as any mortal has ever seen. Its eyes glowed with a smoldering glare. The whole of its ox-sized body was outlined in the white hot flames. Ooh, that's exciting. And yeah, this is the last one for the first great Ace Attorney game. The second one has like three chapters, I believe. So I think those are the ones that are going to be pretty long because this one had five. All right, let us begin. It's coming! Sholmes' cry pierced through the thick wall of fog around us. Wisps of vapor flowed over the pistol as I cocked it, and I waited breathlessly in the stillness. The silence lasted for what seemed an eternity until, at last, it appeared. From the shadows of the cloud, an enormous beast sprang out upon us. A hound it was but not such a hound as any mortal has ever seen. Its eyes glowed with a smoldering glare. The whole of its ox-sized body was outlined in white-hot flames. Its rumbling pant and hideous howl, so terrified was I that I began to tremble with fear. Look well, Wilson, Sholmes declared, gazing upon the mystical beast. For this, this is the diabolical hound of the Baskervilles.
Ooh, I feel like... I don't know, I'm gonna throw it out there. I feel like the hound might be a machine, but we'll see. Our first two months in London passed in a flash. In that disconcerting courtroom experience, we were first thrown into on the day we arrived in the country. And Mr. psyche sounds terrible ordeal that had followed closely behind, we had emerged victorious. However, there then came an abrupt end to our opportunities to appear in court. Which was hardly surprising, of course. Since I was nothing more than an amateur and unknown student of law from a faraway land. So life in our little office was very quiet. That is. Until it was shattered one day by the fateful telegram. And two months of quietness? That seems quite a long time. You would think the... The country would like throw something at you for being a student <laughs> there. Uh, 15 April 9.13 AM. Naruhudo's legal consultancy. <clears throat> that morning, I was woken. I was woken by the unreserved knocking on the door by the telegram boy. But after he'd gone, Susato-san's behavior became very obviously strange. Um, Susato-san. Yes. Is it time to leave for court already? Let me see, what case is it today? Have we had cases? I thought we had- oh, I guess we've had cases, but not like any crazy ones. Uh, I don't think I'm scheduled to defend anyone at the moment, am I? Oh no, no, of course not, how silly of me. But I think Iris said she would make us- uh, make us breakfast this morning. So shall we go down to Mr. Sholm's suite? Yes! Iris makes the most delicious breakfast foods. Does she? Does it? she? And once our pennies are full, we can leave for court in fighting fit form. Let me see, what case is it today? I think we just went over the Thursday one today. Here we go again. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, let's just have a little conversation. So the telegram. So, what was it about? The telegram that was delivered this morning, I mean. Oh, a telegram? I I don't know what you're talking about. Um. Sorry, but you're not going to get away with that. <laughs> well, I don't. I didn't think I would. Actually, um. Don't give it a moment's thought. It's nothing. Nothing interesting. Boring, in fact. Never. It was just a boring old telegram. That's three times now that she's tried and failed to convince me it was nothing. I promise that I'll tell you about it at some point. Alright, I understand. That's a bit weird. Honestly, I would just keep pushing to let me see it now. I suppose Sasaki-san will have arrived back in Japan by now, won't he? How long would a shipwreck be? That would be quite a long time, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, I should think so. He left immediately after the terrible ordeal. Which would mean he should have completed the voyage already, or be just a few days away. A fortnight ago, we had that very long telegram from him, do you remember? Complaining of seasickness? But by and large, it seems the voyage has been going well. Is something wrong now, Hudo-san? I was just wondering, what might have become of soseki san had he stayed in London, that's all. You mean, as regards Lord Van Zeex, the Reaper? Yes, I can't help wondering if seasickness would have paled into significance in that case. The Reaper. Can I talk more about him? Are we gonna learn more about him this case? Imagine we're defending him. <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, what is it they say? That no one who stands in the dock can be saved from the Reaper, right? Like the way that nightmarish trial ended on the very day we arrived in London. Yeah, that's something that'll stick in your head. Even two months on, the cause of that dreadful fire is still a mystery. Yes, but at least suseki san is safely out of the country now, presumably that means. But the curse of the Reaper can only take effect within the confines of the city of London, perhaps? 
Even if that's the case, little comfort. I have a terrible sense of foreboding. The legend of the Reaper is to be believed. It would mean he wields the sword of justice himself. Come to think of it, I wonder what he's been up to these past two months. Apparently not wielding that sword against more acquitted uh, defendants. No, I don't think so. Apparently, Lord Van Zeeks hasn't appeared in court once since our last encounter. Oh. Yeah, since Oseki san's trial, he's withdrawn from the judicial service again, it seems. Really? It's like that, just like before, when he wasn't seen in court at all for several years? So it's just been me who has had to face him in recent spates of trials then. Ugh, just my luck. Wonder if luck doesn't come into it. Sorry? What was that? Oh, nothing. Never mind. Okay, well, let's take a look around the room, I assume. Nice to see where we are living in now for the past two months. It's spring at last, and the weather is warmer now. I love the smell of the fire and the steam rising from the kettle. Oh, would you like some tea, naruhudo san Thank you, Susato. But I'm alright for now. But the green tea Susato makes me from time to time and Iris' unique herbal infusions, this place is paradise for a true tea lover. Green tea is such a wonderful accompaniment to British tea cakes, don't you think? Alright, what else is around here? We got the window there, we got some hobby stuff? So this is the tea set, oh the tea set, that Susato brought with her from Japan. Let's hope she hasn't noticed me slipping sugar and milk into my tea when she makes it. It's just so bitter. <laughs> tea is a drink to be enjoyed, Naruto-san. You really don't have to force yourself to drink it, you know? I don't like to see you screw up your face, so... <laughs> Alright, here's our desk. Pretty messy. We've only been here in London for, London for about two months, but my desk is starting to look a little messy already. You could tidy up at once in a while. Is that sun? I, I always, is that son I always say? Uh, making a mess is a small sacrifice to pay for being able to further your studies. In time spent tidying up, it's time you can devote to the same cause. In time spent on ridiculous arguments, it's time could be better spent on some simple house homework. Simple housework. Uh, she wins, but I'm supposed to be a lawyer here. <laughs> oh, what's this? Ah, the Daruma doll I bought, brought with me from home. Still with one eye colored in. I'd say I colored the other eye once. I won my first court case here in Britain, but... But you have one, haven't you? Twice, in fact. Because I feel as though I'm still lacking as a lawyer. I tell you what. Why don't you color the other eye in once you think I'm a proper, fully-fledged lawyer? If you insist... Anything else around here, or are we ready to get on moving? Look, there's some stuff here. Ah, this must be the telegram. Let's see. Ah! No, you mustn't look at that. Not under any circumstances. All right, all right, I won't. I'm sorry, Naruhudo-san, but you can be very mischievous at times. Then put the telegram away if you don't want people looking at it. All right, well, what's this? There's a little chest here. We were rather lucky to find that old aquarium left behind here. Oh, an aquarium. The prawns we put in there are doing rather well. And the anemones, too. It's a wonderful invention, is it? The sea behind glass inside your room. Another example of Great Britain's greatness. Having to clean it out and change the water isn't so great, though, is it? Yeah, I don't think we have filters yet, do we? Oh, well, that's unfortunate. See, there's a room back here. Do you know, I've never seen inside your room there, Susato san. Oh, there's a room. Uh, that's her room. I don't even have a door to mine. <laughs> I've never even peeped inside. I, I should think so, too. A young maiden's private chambers is a place of bittersweet secrets, you know? Whatever you say, young maiden. Alright, I think we're ready to move on to someplace else. Alright, to Sholm's Suites. What a lovely attic we have. And still as messy as ever. 15 April, Sholmes is sweet. Morning, Rudo. Morning, Susie. Good morning, Iris. Um, Iris? 
What is it, Runo? What is that terrible noise? It sounds like a cat being strangled. Ah, yes. You noticed that, didn't you? Oh, so sad. He's learning. Really <laughs> isn't the best form this morning, it seems. Hello. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Good, good morning. <laughs> good morning to die, perhaps. Uh, something happened, Mr. Sholmes. You look miserable, and the way you were playing the violin before... <sighs> My analytical mind is dead. Music is dead. The world is dead. Wow, something happened. Damn this blasted existence! That's... That's all it is, my dear fellow. Nothing of consequence. Um, clearly there's something more here. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, Iris, isn't it time we ate? Some dry toast and, uh, insipid coffee for me? If it's not too much trouble? Oh, we have a cat. Isn't that the same cat? Oh, yeah, he must have left his cat with us. Oh, look, it's Wagahai. Good morning, boy. Meow. Meow. <laughs> that must be some sort of tiny door for cats to use. But how did it get there? Well then, everybody, time for breakfast. Oh, wonderful. Let me help you, Iris. Oh, it would indeed be a fine day to die. Ah, uh, I knew something looked different. Something's missing from Mr. Sholmes' desk. Oh yeah, that desk is strangely empty. Oh wait, isn't that all his stuff? <laughs> happened to his stuff? Uh, you seem to be very unhappy this morning, Mr. Sholmes. What's happened? It used to be the case that's in my hands. This violin sung like the dawn chorus. Its melusant tones would make flowers bloom. It would? But now, the muses are unamused with me. The goddesses of music must have thrown me over. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? For hours I've bowed, for days even though the night I have endeavored, devoured to no avail. That sound, my tone, is lost. That brilliant, clear, unwavering tone. Gone forever! No more recitals of unbridled emotions. Well, if you haven't been practicing much lately, have you, Hurley? Don't worry, I'm sure I'll come back to you in time. Heed my words, Mr. Naruhudo. The goddesses of arts are fickle. One day they bestow genius on a man, the next they unmercifully withdraw it. Oh dear. Ah, why is this happening to me? If they take the tar if they take the turn I have for the violin from me. What is left, for pity's sake? What is left? Um, deduction, perhaps? Isn't that what you're known for? Mr. Sholmes, I don't like to pry, but... The desk looks rather empty today. Ah, well done, Mr. Sato. Your observation skills do you credit. Oh no, Mr. Sholmes, they pale in significance when compared to yours. You struggled to not notice, wouldn't you? You mean Hurley's great analytoscope? That's at Windybanks now. Sorry, it's at Windy Banks? No, Windybanks, the pawn brokery. Pawn? What? You mean you pawn that enormous machine of yours? It has some considerable value, you see? Quite undeservingly. But isn't it a very important machine for your work? I do wish you had consulted us if your situation had become so desperate. I should have gladly passed what little income I have to you. Dear madam, things are far from desperate. But but the pawnbroker has that wonderful machine. How can it be anything but desperate? Making use of a pawnbroker is quite ordinary here in London, I assure you. It is? 
doesn't sound ordinary at all. It would seem that neither of you fully understand how pawnbroking works. Oh. Uh, what's to understand exactly? Guess we're gonna talk about pawnbroking? <laughs> um, what did you mean when you said that you said we didn't fully understand how pawnbroking works? To the people of London, pawnbrokers are kin to banks. Banks? On Mondays, merchants will link with their finest jackets and trappings to their pawnbrokers of choice. With the money they receive in return, they are able to trade happily through the week. And then on Saturdays, they go to recover their things using the money they've earned. I had no idea. This has been a fascinating lesson to us. Everyone does it, you see, especially people in inner London. And should they have money to spare, they would purchase another fine jacket. Not to wear, obviously, but to pawn, should the need arise. Oh, how ingenious. So whenever we have something that's getting in the way, we leave it at window bakes, you see? A pawn brokery can be thought of as an extremely secure vault. Who would have thought that even pawnbrokers are different here in Great Britain? Of course, you have to watch Hurley with it. Sometimes he pawns things he really shouldn't. Don't you, Hurley? Oh, is that what happened? What does it matter? The world is dead to me now. Okay, well, let's, uh... No, not move over. Maybe examine the room. Talk to Iris. Waga hi! It's the cat. Mr. Natsume's cat seems to have settled into his new home then. Oh yes, I've become very attached to the little waggy. Huh? It would appear to his previous owner has completely forgotten him. Cats are unfeeling creatures. The muse as empty as the hearts of the muse. Mr. Natsume had no intention of taking Waggy back to Japan. I wonder why he kept him in the first place. I expect he would have taken him if he could, but planets are strictly forbidden aboard steamships in our experience. And for good reasons, terrible things can happen if the rules of passage are not obeyed. Well, I don't mind, because Waggy is adorable. Yes, he really is. Oh yes, what about the door? I don't remember seeing that tiny thing in the main door before. Where did that come from? Oh, you notice you're observant, Reno. Look, I use this. It's my latest invention. What? What is that? I call it the cat flapper mat. Gosh, a machine for making doors just for cats? That's right. It can make a cat flap for a little furry friend like Waggy in seconds. And it can do it on any door at all, no matter what it is made of. It's very powerful, you see? Wouldn't it have been quicker just to make the cat flap rather than making a machine to make the cat flap? Well, yes, maybe, but now I can make cat flaps anywhere I like. Oh, I think it's wonderful. You must make an, one for us in the door of our office upstairs, Iris. She really knows how to come up with unconventional inventions. This girl. <laughs> oh, something's happened. But this is where we have to stop this part here. So, thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. And until then, I will see you all later. Goodbye.